to this thing and um, appropriate all that will teach you in your life will not be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. This month, I mean the month we've been concentrating on the Holy Spirit, the person and the workings of the Holy Spirit. And then Pastor also said that the month is a month of unusual, unusual breakthrough. Today's empower service, the service of empowerment. And then we'll be drinking, we've been drinking the Holy Ghost, the rivers of the one have flowing from our bowels. But then you know if it's not well channeled, if it's not channeled specifically to the things you need. Because it's the same goal that the Bible says that He gives us all that pertains to life and godliness by His divine nature. He has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. So the first purpose for life is to be a complete Christian, a whole Christian that has all, has all of God and all His rewards and all His benefits. Hallelujah. That's the purpose for you. That's God's purpose for us. So the Holy Ghost sponsors so many things in our lives. This morning I'll sharing on activating faith for the unusual breakthroughs. Activating faith for unusual breakthroughs. And the Holy Ghost is central to the activation of faith in the life of a believer. The Holy Ghost sponsors faith in our heart. Hallelujah. If you're, if you're lacking in faith, engage the Holy Ghost. Engage Him. He's a professional in making you rise in faith and do all that God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. Each time we teach on the subject of faith, we always um, go to uh, this part of the scripture, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. Verse 3. By faith we can understand that the words we are framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, we are not made of the things which are visible. Hallelujah. The things which are seen, we are not made of the things that are visible. Hallelujah. Faith is an intangible asset that is central to the Christian faith. That is why the Christianity is called the faith. It is called the faith. Without faith, the Bible says it is impossible to please Him. It is impossible to relate with God because God is a spirit. Everything with God is Christianity. We get it by faith. Our salvation is only by faith in the finished work of Christ. It's not by our own works. It's by that which Jesus has done and finished on the cross. So appropriating your faith on that which has finished gives you salvation. The same thing, the same faith gives you sanctification. The same faith gives you everything you need in Christ Jesus Christ. Everything you need. Everything you will ever need. All you need to do is to get a substance which is faith. The Bible says that faith is the substance of that particular thing you're hoping for. That particular thing that is your desire. That particular thing that you need. All you need is a substance. In fact, the Bible calls it the title deed. Hallelujah. When you have had a plot of land to sell, what shows that you have the land? You may not be carrying the land in your, in your head and say, please, I want to sell the land, buy land. No. But when you show the title deed, they know that you have that land. It's not, it's not so. So when you have the substance,
plans, then you can be sure that you will have everything you need. And the part of thing go for the evidence of thing not seen. Without faith, you can't live with God. Without faith, you can't receive from God. Without it, you can't even please Him. God is not, is not really touched by your cries or your emotion. It's about your faith in His Word. If you can't believe Him, in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 22, it says, If thou canst believe, all things shall be possible. If thou can believe, if you can believe him, God wants to be believed. God wants you to believe him. Believe that his word is true. You know, if you as a man and somebody that is your friend or close to you or knows you and knows your ability and the person is doubting it, how would you feel? Would you just say, ah, you don't believe me now. I know you don't believe me. You don't just believe me. And you feel so bad that the person that should believe you does not believe you. Does not have belief in you. How would you feel? That's the same way God feels when we're doubting. Without his capacity. Without his credibility, without his word, but if thou can believe, all things, so I want to say all things, all things, all things, whatsoever it might be, in your business, in your family, in your career, that your business has been going, that has been going up and down. Maybe you've been believing in your strength. You've been believing in your intelligence. You've been believing in your own wisdom, your own ways, in your own calculation. You've been working based on your own budget. And you can't just make space for God. You cannot believe God for the impossible. You cannot believe God for the unusual. You know what unusual means? It means something that is not consistent with the norm. Something that is not consistent with the norm. Something that is entirely different. Something that is crazy, that looks crazy. Something that the people will hear and say, God, are you in the colon? Are you sure you are okay? It means it's unusual. God is said to do something unusual in your life, in your family, in your business, in your career, in your finances. It does not matter how long it has been. In that marriage, and in that since there is no child, you try so many times, you have failed. The Bible said, Jesus is saying, if thou can't believe, all things shall be possible to you. Or maybe you are like Mary, that is asking the angel Gabriel, how shall this thing be? How shall this thing be? Seeing that I don't know a man, it looks so impossible. I mean, it is beyond my my, you know, my, 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 my calculation, my, all my learning is beyond this. All my financial knowledge, I don't have. That the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The Holy Ghost shall brood upon you. The Holy Ghost shall rest upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. Not when the Holy Ghost comes. When He comes, impossibility. There's nothing like it in His dictionary. Because out of nothing, the world was created. Out of nothing, the world was created. The things that appear were made for things that, that don't appear, that, don't, that is not seen. All you need is faith. That is the ultimate currency. That is the ultimate currency. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who commits to God 
must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He that comes to God must first of all believe that there is God. There is all-knowing God, omnipotent God, omniscient God, omnipresent God. And he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that reject this seeking. He said, I have not asked the son that seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. I have not asked her to seek me in vain. I didn't call him to serve me just, just for me to just take all the glory and all the accolades without having nothing to show for it. There is a reward. Say, say, say there is a reward. There is a reward. Our Father is a rewarder. The Bible says he's not unrighteous to forget your level of love. He's not unrighteous. Just believe him. If you are seeking God, if you are a God seeker, God rewards. Hallelujah. But you must believe him. You must have faith. God is a spirit. He is invisible. And without faith, you can't experience God. God experience different dimensions of his personality. Without faith, God experience different dimensions. You have known God as a savior. He has, he has saved you from sin. He has forgiven you. He has pardoned you. And you only know him as a savior. The same God that is a savior is also the healer. And if you are in sickness and your health is failing you, it has deployed your healing 2,000 years ago on the cross. The same God is a healing God. That saves you is also your healer. And the same God is also your provider. It's Jehovah Jireh. It's that same God. It's that same God. Multifaceted God. The multi-present one. Everything flows from him. Just the one you focus. But without faith, you cannot understand. You cannot relate. You cannot experience different dimensions of God. Maybe you are yet to know God as a provider. You are yet to know him in the area of your life, in your breakthrough, in your business, in your family. Trust God with all your hearts. Apply your faith. Get a substance. And God will come true for you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will come true for you. It's amazing that many are serving God, but yet they don't have anything to show for it. Not to show for the level of love. No house, no spouse, no job. It's as if our God is not the wicked God. He is not the wicked Father. He is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. Not because God is unfaithful. Never. But because people don't realize that God is a spirit. The God's reward as first is in our spiritual life. Our blessing is for spiritual. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. We must understand how faith works, how God works. And if you don't understand it, you might look as if God is wicked. But He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings. Where? In the heavenly places in Christ. That is where those blessings are. First, in your spirit. In Christ, when you came to Jesus, when you accepted him as a personal Lord and Savior, it came with a full package. It was downloaded into your spirit. Every good thing you need in this life is in Christ Jesus. Is in a heavenly place. It means that that blessing
person, those things you need, they are both spiritual. Mean that if you go about it carnal, you can't even get it. If you are not in line with God, if you are not in the spirit, you cannot even assess them. You can't even assess, you can't even love them. Everything you need that pertains to life and godliness, it has blessed you already. It's as if he has given to you in advance, advance payment. A down payment has been made for all you need in this life to live a good and better life. But then you must understand that they are in your spirits. That you must understand the technology of conversion. Of converting these things into your reality. Into physical. You must know how to appropriate them. And that can only be done by faith. That can only be done by faith. Faith is that ultimate currency. It's only by faith that you can convert your spiritual blessing into physical. Yeah, like... You know, in the, in the financial world, that is they call near cash item. Near cash item. They are close to cash, but they're not. They're, they're not physical cash. They're not tangible already. But then you must understand that because they are already near cash. Just for example, you have a banker's check, the manager's check, what you call um, bank draft, where it's been given to you. You don't have to, you don't have to be afraid again whether it will bounce or not. I can write you a check and it will bounce because there will not be money in my account. And that's why people don't like collecting checks from people because a lot of checks have bounced. But not manager's check, not banker's check, not MC. That one you come to raise for school fees. No, that money has already entered. The bank is holding it. They have collected the money from the customer, and bank is already holding it. So it cannot bounce. It cannot fail. It is already there. It's handy. Once you come, you just collect. That is just how it is. That's just how it is. It has been downloaded. Just all you need to just convert it to your account. That's all. Just come and bring, present the, the manager's check and they will credit you the value. That is all. It cannot bounce. You need to understand the, the greatness of the things that God has put in your spirit when you give a life to Jesus. Or you need to know the technology of conversion, converting it to reality. And that can be done by the currency of faith. That's why, as a Christian, faith failure is not enough to have failure in the physical. When your faith has failed you, my dear, it's as if your heart has failed you in the physical. Because that's the only thing we can connect with God. The God is a spirit, He's not man. You must relate with Him, not with your mind, not with your senses, not with your calculation. You can only live with God by faith. By faith, it's impossible to please God. So all the things we're asking, go for the faith. Go for the substance. And you can convert it. You can convert it to reality. You can have all that you ask or imagine. Hallelujah. You can draw from the bank of the Almighty. There's so much abundance there. So much abundance there. Abundance of healing, abundance of treasures, abundance of finances in your heavenly bank and cry Jesus. All you need is faith. Instead of crying and complaining, go get the faith for what you desire. Faith is a paramount thing. Faith is what delivers all you need to you. Hallelujah. That's what delivers all you need to you. Then somebody asks, How can I receive this faith? How can I 
activate it. Or you might be saying, oh, my faith is low. My faith level is low. How can I activate it? How can I receive faith? Primarily, faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing. And not just any kind of hearing. <laughs> it's not any kind of hearing. Not hearing gossip. Not hearing things that does not concern what you are looking for. You must channel that hearing aright. You must, you know, you must see what you hear. The word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not a student of the Bible and the word of God is cast in your spirit, you can't have faith. If the word of God is cast in your spirit, no matter how much you cry, no matter how much you blame people or you blame God, God is only entitled to you when you make connection to Him by His word. It is written when you can show where it is written in the world that thing you are looking for and you stay on it you put on it you meditate on it you meditate on it you stay on it until you extract the faith until the word jumps into your spirit until it becomes flesh, until it becomes, I mean, it becomes so full and confident like you just have it. Until you just know, I have this. Until one of God comes alive, until that particular area you are looking for God for, then in the area of healing, you begin to make the lion so it becomes alive, and then you are so full as if you are you are drunk. It's not just one, just one reading. You stay on it. You soak it. Hearing the word of God, you must meditate on God's word. That is what produces faith in a believer. We are full of God's word. Doubts cannot be found in you. Fear will escape. You believe God for the impossible. You believe that that dry bone can rise again. You believe that that failed business can rise again. You believe that lack shouldn't be found in me. You believe that you have, you have abundance in you. Hallelujah. You can walk out and believe that you have everything. And you see, you, you can picture favor coming your way. Because I tell you that it is very spiritual. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. At that point, Joshua was admonishing the children of Israel. <laughs> they were on their way to the promised land. And you know what? The road was not easy. There were a lot of giants to fight. There were a lot of cities to conquer. There were a lot of things. You know, the road to your greatness is not easy. The road to the promised land, to that thing that God has promised you, it is never easy. There are giants to fight. There are things, that, there, are, there are enemies of this lodge on that way. But Joshua told the children of Israel, You've got to be strong and courageous. Then you've got to be strong and courageous. And by what means can they be strong? By what technology can they be strong? It told them in verse 8 that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. As you are going through that city, as you are going through the to take over the city, there are other giants there. But remember, for you to be strong and courageous. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, day and night, day and night. 
that you will observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good sources. He gave them a solution that this book of the law, you must be loved with the scriptures. That particular thing you are looking for, you are asking God, you are desiring, go look for the scriptures on, on them, meditate on it. Either in marriage, either in finances, in any area of life, there are scripture, that there, there, there are scripture talking about those things. Go look for them, stay on it, meditate on it constantly. That's what their life means. Will I break until you find your breakthrough? Hallelujah. Until the limit go away, until you have a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Faith comes by listening to or watching anointed messages. It cannot remain in depression and remain in doubt. And because you are down, you, you feel like the whole world has come to an end. Carry yourself up. Look for messages. Look for books that will help you rise. That will help you grow your faith. Listen to them. Hear them. The more you soak them, the more you watch them, you have phone, you have YouTube, you have pastor's messages. Go and listen to them. On that area you are trusting God for. How much have you labored on that area? In the spirit. How much have you received the substance of faith that will deliver that thing you are asking God for? How much? How much? How much? How much? We must understand that God is not a magician. He has his word as a compass through which he can deliver to us. Another way faith can come is by soaking anointed testimonies. In Revelation 19 verse 10, the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. That's why when you come to church, we give room for testimony. Not because we want to show how mighty God has used the man of God. Not because we want to show, you know, brag about what God, I'm not sure that yes, I have this, I have that. No. It's because of, as we hear that testimony, you will know that if God can do it for your brother, he can do it for you. If God can do it for your sister, he can do it for you. That is why you see people coming to you know, drop seed to tap into that testimony. That is an action of faith. That's an action of faith. When you listen to testimony that has to do with the things you are asking God for, you will see the same thing as you apply your faith to it. Another thing, area that brings faith to us is faith comes by association. With men and people of faith. Association with men and people of faith. The kind of people you join or you follow will determine whether your faith will rise or your faith will go down. The kind of people that are that you're calling your company is a, is a determinant factor of how large, how robust your faith should be. There are people that have done so well in the area you want to get to. Meet them. Discuss with them. You can also sow into their life. Connect with them. Connect with them. Connect with them. Connect with the person that is carrying what you seek, what you desire. Just like Elizabeth came to connect with Mary. There was a rumble in his tummy. Just by association, just by coming, there's a kind of people that want to stay with them, who will just talk with them. You can't leave that place and say again. Just by just sharing with them, I mean, something happens to your spirit. Just by sharing with them, just by discussing with them on the things of the faith, on the things that matter to you. The Bible of iron, sharpness iron. 
so, so one can sharpen the countenance of his neighbor. You don't just say, I lose, I say, I just want to stop myself out. I just want to be on my own. No. Look for your brother, look for your sister. Share with the person. And faith will rise inside of you. It's not a time to have spoken from church because of you are down. No. Come. One word from the Lord can change your whole story. One word from the altar, from this power pastor can change everything. Association matters. Association matters. There are people you can go with and they will tap in your face. They will tap in your face. They will discourage you the more. Don't go. Don't, don't miss such people. Go with faith builders. Those that will lead your faith. But that is all you need in this kingdom. That is all we need in this kingdom. In this kingdom, it's only faith we can receive from God. If your faith is low, forget it. Forget it. That's why you, why you need to do everything to ensure that you are high in faith. Because if you will believe, all things will be possible. All, without exception, all things is possible. Faith comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. In June 20, the Bible says, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. As you pray in the Holy Ghost. As you pray in the Holy Ghost. As you engage the Holy Ghost. As you engage the Holy Ghost. It heightens you. It takes away fear. It takes away unbelief. Most times, as you listen to the word of God, as you listen to those testimonies, we are praying the Holy Ghost. We are praying the Holy Ghost. Before you know it, doubt has gone. Fear has gone. You just believe God for the impossible. But when your prayer life is low, you can't even read your Bible. How else do you want God? How else do you want that thing to come? This is a Christian faith. This is a Christian faith. It's not, it's not magic. It's not magic. When the devil wants to fight your life, they start fighting these areas, start fighting your Christian, start fighting your, your prayer life, start fighting your world, your world life. The devil is after you. It's after your progress. It's after, after your success. So do everything. Do everything to keep your faith alive. Hallelujah. Do everything to keep your faith alive. Do everything to keep your faith alive. But that is all you need to receive from God, man's man. Pray for that day in tongues over a long period of time. Help to boost your faith. Hallelujah. And on that day that can boost your faith is that faith comes by constant fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit. Constant fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit. Spending time with God will download fresh faith into your spirit. Spending time with God will download fresh faith into your spirit. All you need to spend time with God all you need to do is also spend time with God. And you see yourself rise in faith. Rise in faith. You might be speaking, you have been speaking. Positive confession. Without the Holy Ghost. Without that enablement. Might not do much. It might not do much. Learn to always be watered by the Holy Ghost. So when you speak, it becomes like God speaking. 
In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 The Bible says that the world was The earth was without form It was void Darkness was upon the face of the deep God not just start speaking Before he spoke The Bible says that Holy Ghost Had to brood Had to hover upon the face of the waters All we need to do is to allow the Holy Ghost to hover Allow him to come upon you It's only when you spend time with God In the place of communion In the place of fellowship That the Holy Ghost can come upon you and then you begin to speak, begin to pray. Begin to pray. That is when you know you can pray like God. You can speak things into existence. But not just casual words. Not just unanointed words. No. It's words full of power. Words full of the Holy Ghost. Speak the word of life. Life giving words. Speak to that mountain. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, when you have, you have, you are drunk, you have drunk from the rivers of living water. Just like this morning, the presence of God has permitted into your spirit that the best time to speak to that mountain, speak to that Goliath, speak to that financial situation, and it will give way. Hallelujah. It will give way. It will give way. Communion with the Holy Ghost. I know the Holy Ghost sponsors faith. It sponsors faith in our hearts. It sponsors faith in our hearts. If only you can stay anointed. If only you can you won't play with your devotion. There will be so much God can do in your life. There will be so much faith in you when you spend time with God. What will happen when you spend time with God? Begin, God begins to give you direction. Direction of how, how, how to go about that thing. How to go about that business. That is to do. That is not to do. It's the place, it's in the secret place you get them. It's in the secret place you get the blueprint for that business. In the secret place, you get the blueprint for your life. How to go about that financial situation. Who to call. Who to relate with. You might be telling you what to give. The seed to sow. For that abundance. Because that is a way. That is God's way. Is in Him. Just engage Him. You cannot get it far away. You cannot get it outside God. You must be in Him. You must be in Him. I will show you the path. He will show you the way. He will show you the way. I remember when I was preparing for my wedding. I just got a um, place I was staying. So it was a three bedroom flat. But there was, there was not so much in the, in the house there. I had not so much property. I just had a television. I had a fridge. These are the two most important things inside that house. And all that place were empty. And I was trusting God, preparing for marriage. And one day I was just praying for my devotion. <laughs> you know what the Holy Ghost said? He said, He said, take the two items in that your house, go drop it in the altar, go take it to the church. I said, What? Can this be God? No. I mean, I don't have anything. This house is empty. I'm trusting God to get this few with this. But here's God telling me, Go and drop it. That's the word, because that's the kind of instructions we get. When you are in that constant fellowship, because the way to your breath is not far away, it's not because you are far. But when you come close, you can hear him. He will tell you the exact thing to do. And when you apply it, the doors will open. I 
said, God, say so many, so many things are just coming to my head. I said, how would I even tell? How would I tell the lady I want to marry that the only good thing that she's glad that I even have, I'm about to remove it. I'm about to go and sew it. How she, how would she even feel? She would say, ah, so this is what I'm going to see. <laughs> so this is what I'm entering. So that's how one of these days, the kind of us and so on, so see. I mean, a lot of questions was coming to my mind. How would I even convey the message to her? How would she carry it? Would she give me support of it? I thought of it. I said, God, but if it says so, there's a, there's a kind of a heart I've come to have and I've come to know. I just believe that things are things. I mean, what is it? Just things that money can buy. But I know that my God is Oshimina Nana. I know that my God is a God of the whole earth. When he said to Isaac, go and sow the only son. After Isaac have waited for years, and is in his, I mean, is in his if, the evening, the night of his life, no hope of getting another. And the same Isaac he waited. And when Isaac came, he told Isaac, take Isaac, your only son. And he just ended. Say, Who thou lost? And go and sacrifice him. And Abraham would have. Is God this wicked? But then he obeyed. And here are we, the children of Abraham. God multiplied that seed. God is a multiplier of seed. When you sow, it just, you know, a seed, when you sow once a seed of corn, when it comes, it comes in means, has so many seeds in it. That's how it is. Just believe God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you can't deal with God. Giving is a faith walk. It's not done doing by calculation. Okay, okay, if I remove this one, I will not be able to. I mean, if you calculate like that, you will miss God. No. If you calculate too much, you will miss God. Just, just, I mean, plunge into the world of unknown. Like a sick, just like Peter. That said, Lord, if you're the one, just send me to come. And he said, What came? He never thought that he would sink, but he just followed the instruction, Come. And he just went. And behold, he never sang. He only sang when he said, Looking. When his gaze was out of God. Then I was thinking, What should I do? And I just want courage and I call you. He said, babe, see you, see you, see you, see you. I have instructions to go and saw this. She was just speechless. After a while, he said, well, if it's caught, then go ahead. Go ahead. I said, well, thank you so much. I was so happy. I was so happy that this, she had agreed. You know, sometimes you think that, you know, when you are doing things, when you are going out of your way to follow instruction that God has given you, it might not be pleasing. But when, you, when God has done a work in your heart, you do it with all joy. And then you carry the, 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 the fridge and the television. Brought to this altar, and I came with her. So let's sow this in altar for marriage, for future, for everything. I don't know what God is up to, but that's what He said. Let's just come to this altar. And we came to this altar. We left in this altar. We prayed, and she was just crying. We lost of tears. And after that, we let's. I met Pastor. And pastor prayed for us and said some words into our life and our future. And that's if nothing has happened. Just 
you just two weeks for marriage. Just two weeks for marriage. A promotion came in a place of work. And it happened that I was the only one that was promoted. And it all of the region in the operation. The marketers, people, they were for promotion. But in the, in the operation, I was the only one. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Two weeks. Two weeks to our traditional marriage. This will happen. I said, God, what is it? Just obedience or instruction. That's why I say you can only get this when you are a person of the secret place. When you can receive instruction on how and where to go and get that which you want, that you desire. What did you do? And that's how everything it just paid me some some big, you know, created my car with so many things and so you know, marriage became very I'm able to pay the bills and hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I will never forget that experience. I will never forget it. Because you cannot beat God with it. And when you are you know, like I say, it's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. If I had calculated with my own understanding, I wouldn't have done that. That was just one of it. There have been a lot of instruction, a lot of things that I've been able to do just by just obeying. Just by obeying God. Maybe you are here. And God, I've been telling you something. Do this, do that. And you have been looking at it with your own understanding. The Bible says, live not on your own understanding. Put your trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts and live not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Him. And He, God, will direct your step. He will direct your step, child of God. He will direct your step. He knows your destiny. He knows your future. He is God. He knows your tomorrow. He can only see now. You can only see now. He knows tomorrow. Sometimes what God wants to do may not be to bless you financially. My, my business, there's some battles he wants to fight for you. There's some things he wants to take away from. There's some things, there's some battles he wants to fight for you. And because of that action of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to relate with God and get other dimensions of Him. Hallelujah. Amen. How can our faith grow? Our faith can grow by putting it to work. Putting it to work. The more you use your faith to accomplish things, the stronger it will grow. For instance, in the area of finance, you say, okay, I want to start developing my faith. In the area of finance, I've been giving God. Maybe your, your, your threshold of giving has the 5,000. If they ever, if they ever, if, if they ever make mention of giving, they can't pass 5,000. No matter how you pass or talk, you can't pass 5,000. That has, maybe that's your threshold. But if you want to, you want to prove God, you go out of your comfort zone. And do that which you have never done before. Do that which your ancestors have not done. You know, do you know, do you know the kind of sacrifice that have been made? The, the evil sacrifice that have been made. Do you know how many? Do you know how much? If you want to do, if you want to prove God, and you you need to you need to go out of your way and have the hearts. Can God trust you? How, do you know how God, God, God can only trust you with millions when He loses how you are having all the thousands that has given you? Some of us just paying tight alone is at an issue, and you are trusting God for the million for higher level. So, giving is an act of faith. So, if you must grow in that area of your life, that's what you are trusting God. You are trusting God in the millions. Why not trust God and 
give to that tune, give to that level. And you, you know, the more you do it, you do it over and over and over. At the point, it becomes normal to you. That rain becomes normal to you. You're not afraid what they call about a, a, a certain amount of money. Why? Because you have, you have conquered it. You have conquered it. That's a way to grow faith. Hallelujah. That's a way to grow faith. Ask yourself, how much have you done? You are trusting God for mega finances. How much have you given to God? How much have you given to God this year alone? How much have you given to God? Reconcile with how much you are giving to yourself. How much air time you have bought this year? How much data you have bought this year? And how much you are giving to God? How much you are giving to God? You only see your senses. That's why you've been, you've been the way you are. God has been, say, okay now. Well now. Be using your sense. How much have you contributed to the house of God? How much? There will be a lot of wars going on in this church. I'm sure each time you come to church, you'll be seeing new things. Today we just saw this one, this stage one in law. That day we saw keyboard, we saw a lot of things going on. The only thing the money is coming from heaven is men. People like you that are laboring. That ensuring that the house of their God, their father, does not suffer. There's abundance in it. They have their heart for God. That still was, that knows that all they have, God gave them. And it is their responsibility to ensure that the house of God has all it needs. And they have grown capacity in it. Therefore, God can trust them by a level. God can trust them for more. God can trust them for more. As for says so this year, how much have you given to God for projects? For the kingdom. For the kingdom. For the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your giving should progress to the point that you step out in faith to give God to do that which you have never done before. Prove me, says the Lord. Prove me, says the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven, I'll pour out a blessing that you will not, may not have room enough to get them, to contain them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As we end the service, step out in faith. Step out in faith in that area of trusting God. Step out in faith. Step out in faith. Do what you have never done before. Stay on God's word. Stay on it. Until it comes alive. Until it comes alive. Until it delivers to you. The word is true. Don't judge God's word by experience. Rather, raise your experience to the standard of His word. The word is the standard. The word is the truth. It's not your own experience. It might be a fact that it is how I'm going through. But that is not true. The word of God is the truth. And it never fails. It never fails the people of old. The Bible said by faith, the women got their children back to life. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're trusting God this month. The month of unusual. Unusual breakthrough. But if you can engage God in faith this morning and cry to Him and pray, there's nothing He cannot do. Hallelujah. If thou canst believe, all things will be possible to you. All things will be possible to you this month. All things will possible to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Abundance of favor is coming your way this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of God's heart, because of the project you have, because of the things you have accomplished, God is boosting your faith. God is downloading a fresh faith to get all your desire. This month, this week, as we step out in 
the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 68, verse 29. As we stand up and pray, let's go on our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Psalm 68. Psalm 68, verse 29. Because of the temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring presents to you. Because of his house, Shaneka Pandel Salaba, Elina Go Bradila Baledo Shaka, Shelemel Sulakan de Kaila Brande Kubo, Embrondo Sulaka and Baladela de Gabarava, Rande Beleko Padia. If you obey God this morning, if you will lean on His promises, shalom alaikum. And let me let them, if you obey His instruction, if you obey His instruction, it's not only because, it's not only because, align with God this morning, align with God this morning, align with the importance, because of His temple. Unusual, unusual breakthrough, unusual anointing coming upon you. 